G'day everyone, how's it going? So I'm sorry I haven't uh, uploaded sooner. Uh, we've just been out of internet uh, at our house for the last month or so. We had new ceilings put in, which meant ripping out all of the routers and all of that. So I've used that as a time to um, sort of kick back and relax a bit as the new year ticked over. A bit of stuff's happened since then. So for those of you that don't know, this will be the third valve cover I will have had on this patrol. Uh, the GU patrol uses a vacuum pump that sits on the rocker cover. Uh, that's all well and good, but it creates a weak spot in the valve cover because of uh, all of the rigidities taken out of it. And so what happens is it cracks right in the corner and that leaks oil out, which goes onto your exhaust, makes smoke, makes smell, and yeah, it's just not fun. The first thing you've got to do to fix that is try and find a valve cover that doesn't have a crack in it, which can be a bit of a problem. Uh, the, I just sort of searched around a marketplace. Uh, this was the third one I'd... Actually, no, sorry, this is the second one I'd bought. Uh, the first one was cracked as well. Um, you can do a sort of a diapane crack inspection if you really wanted to, but yeah, I I couldn't be bothered. You can weld these valve covers. The only annoying thing is they're made of aluminium, meaning that the only way to get a good weld through it is to use an AC TIG welder. Uh, and then they're really expensive to come by and difficult to use if you're not really trained. I'm sure getting a mate to do a cashew for you would be easy and it would be fine but um it's easy to get a valve cover that hasn't actually cracked yet since that creates a weak spot but anyway i was going to use the valve cover gasket that was already in there but i think it had been through enough heat cycles to where it had expanded too much and it wasn't able to sit in the groove properly so i just ended up buying another one uh repco actually had them locally which was good didn't have to wait for ebay to ship them uh so i just it, cleaned it up, installed it with a bunch of silicon. Make sure you put silicon on the half moon at the back and then you put a bunch around where the front cam snout is. And once that's all on, you uh, stick it down, read the back of your gasket maker, whatever it is, uh, as they may differ depending on drying time, uh, if the brands are different. But for this one, it just said, sit it on, put the bolts on by finger until you see the gasket goo stick out or squeeze out and then wait an hour and then talk it up. So I did that for the valve cover. And then uh, we moved on to the vacuum pump, which is something I wanted to talk about. All right, so we're going to talk about the, ooh, get the lighting better, talk about these little vacuum pump things here. So this is something I really want to touch on because it's a bit of an overlooked thing, uh, but they're rather important for the patrol's operation. But um, the service manual actually doesn't explain how they work or how to strip them. Uh, they say that they're a sealed module that can't be serviced. Um, I think the only reason they've done that is because they retain quite a bit of spring tension. You could do some pretty bad damage to yourself if you get something wrong and let the spring go. These vacuum pumps, um, this is the one I was running on my car and this is the one that I'm probably going to be putting on my car. Now the reason I'm going to be swapping is because I have cracked two valve covers now. Now I don't know if I cracked them or they were already cracked but um, what that could mean is that because the vacuum pumps got this uh, little piston or reciprocating cam follower which follows on a journal ground into the cam uh, what that means is that maybe if there's too much pressure from compressing that spring or too much force being generated inside the vacuum pump pushing down on the cam uh, as the cam comes up there's too much force going all the way through the valve cover and it's cracking as it's coming up and down like that. So I believe that could be a problem. Uh, so what I might do is I'll swap to this, but how do I know that this vacuum pump is working? Well, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pop these uh, top bolts off. You need a special kind of bit for it. I don't know what these are called. I think these are anti-tamper Torx heads. It might say, no, it doesn't say. But you require these ones with the Torx head and then the dimple in the middle. I believe they're called anti-tamper. So I'm going to, you can pop the top off. Um, there's just this many screws. Uh, be aware though that they do not share the same geometry of top. I've had a different uh, vacuum pump that has a different style of top and the, it wasn't interchangeable between my one and it. Uh, these two appear to be the same. Uh, upon visual inspection, you can see that they're pretty the same. However, if you look at the back here, you'll notice that this one's got this sort of bigger nutsack on the back compared to my one over here, which is um, a bit weird. I don't know why they did so many sort of revisions with the design, but um, yeah, we're going to ignore that. Uh, I'm going to pop the top off this one. We're going to have a look at the little uh, check valves in there. Ooh. 
Thank God. Alright, so the first thing we observe with the head off it, you see there's one, two, three little check valves here, and there is one more down here, just in there. But the way these work, got the piston here, got the uh, piston or cylinder cap, you'd call it, put it on the top there, and uh, you got little check valves here. So this one looks different to this, that's because this one is just the same type, but it's flipped over. Because if you push down on this, see it'll pop open, and then it'll come back up because, don't know if you'll be able to see, there's a spring in between this top part here uh, and the disc there, putting tension on it. So, let's say your cam's here, so your piston's going to come down. What that's going to do is create a negative pressure in the top here, in the top port of the piston, which will lift this valve open because of the negative pressure which will suck air in through this way creating a vacuum or creating negative pressure here drawing that all through this valve into the chamber as soon as the piston reaches the bottom of its stroke and it stops drawing air in this will cause the disc to close and seal all of the air in the cavity here and then as soon as the cam comes around or the lobe comes pushes back up and causes the piston to start coming up again it's going to lift this disc here and that will push the air out of this cavity down through here coming out to the port under here into the crank case and now the reason for this valve here is that you've actually got a fail safe mechanism built into this or it's I guess you could call it double acting in which both sides of the piston will be creating usable vacuum because you've got these two acting on the top half of the piston then you've got this valve and this one down here acting on the negative on the bottom part of the piston so as the piston comes up this valve here is actually connected into the bottom half of the cavity down there so as it comes up it's going to lift this one open drawing vacuum through here see that down there down in here so it's going to draw vacuum through here see how the o-ring is going to separate this this block here from the rest here on the top half of the cylinder so it's going to create vacuum draw it through there until the piston reaches the top of its stroke uh, that's going to the same as the top half be filled with the air from inside the brake booster or inside the vacuum canister and as soon as the piston comes back down it's going to dump all of that out of this valve into the crankcase same as the top half so what you observe or what you take from all that is that the actual vacuum pump dumps the cavity of air or the volume of air it draws from the brake booster and vacuum canister into the crankcase hence causing potentially a lot of blow by or a lot of air being forced out of the PCV and I think that's partially why they say that the RD28 needs to operate with a bit of positive crankcase pressure People go ahead and chuck uh, uh, catch cans on all of their RD28s, and um, I don't know how necessarily bad that is, but the thing you've got to remember is that um, the lip seals on the cam, uh, on the front and rear main seals, they actually require a little bit of positive pressure on the inside of the crankcase to flare out the lip and seal it against the dynamic moving part on the inside of it. But anyway, uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this vacuum pump looks. The only way I can test it, I'm going to put a cap on here, just like a hose clamp or something with a bit of a hose, uh, and then I'm going to run this bulb here to the boost gauge on my Hilux. I'm going to reciprocate it once or twice and make sure that it's creating vacuum on the gauge as it is on the upstroke and the downstroke. The whole reason that I'm doing this test being I stripped my original vacuum pump that came on the car when I bought it and one of the valves was completely blown out, meaning that the vacuum pump was only creating vacuum on one side of the piston, or only creating half as much vacuum through the brake booster and vacuum canister than it should be, which was the whole reason why my brakes were really spongy when I first got them. If you need to pull out one of the valves, uh, a little tap, almost the right size for the center diameter of it, um, you can just start it in by finger, and they should pull out pretty easily. I looked around online and I've managed to identify similar looking valves, however since the 
Vacuum pump is stated by Nissan as a non-serviceable item that should be replaced as a whole. Uh, I am not able to verify that these are the right valves despite them looking extremely similar. But anyway, on to testing the vacuum pump. Okay, so I've got the uh, end here plugged with a bolt uh, and then I've got the tee-off line all the way running. I've just had to join it together with these shitty little um, valves for sprinkler systems but um, they run to normally my uh, line is connected here which is the intake manifold but now this connects all the way into the car going to the T on the back of the ECU for the manifold reference and to my boost gauge now you might be saying well there's probably like a hundred percent chance there's going to be a leak in that uh, system somewhere but all I'm trying to achieve is to see if the boost gauge is going to start making vacuum as it reciprocates down and up so on the down and the up stroke of the piston I don't care about it getting to a negative pressure and holding there I just want to see it making vacuum on both sides of the piston so I'll shout down and up down. Up. well as a uh, as ghetto as that setup was, it actually worked and it's proven that um, yeah, vacuum's being made both on the down and the upstroke. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to wash out the bottom in there with um, a bit of a degreaser, being careful not to get too much, if any, on the tops of the little valves, otherwise it might ruin the soft seats in them. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to install it back on the car. I'm not going to use one of the metal gaskets because I don't have any that are brand new. I'm just going to use a crap ton of that uh, sealant stuff. And as well as that, when you sit this on the car, you make sure, or you sit this on without any gasket, and you turn the camera around until you see the whole vacuum pump sit down as low as humanly possible. Apparently it will sit completely flush on the valve cover. I've never seen that before, but um, some people reckon that it can be done. But anyway, enough talking. Uh, I'll clean this up and I'll get ready to put it on the car. Again, with this gasket maker I use, you've got to wait an hour for it to dry completely before you um, torque it up to the maximum torque. So first things first, don't put any gasket maker down, just sit the vacuum pump where it's meant to sit on the studs and we're going to rotate the camera around so it sits as low as possible on the valve cover for us to bolt it up. To spin the engine it's a uh, 27mm socket on the end of a breaker bar and you just put that on the harmonic balancer. And make sure you spin it clockwise. When you've got it to a smallest amount of gap possible, that should be sweet. So pull your pump up, make sure both the sealing surfaces are free of any nicks. If you're going to be using a metal gasket, make sure you use a brand new one because they crush to create a seal. You cannot reuse one. I'm not too sure whether it's worth caking one in gasket maker on both sides. I just ended up putting gasket maker straight onto the surface of the vacuum pump through the, the ribs of the pump itself, all over it as much as I could physically get. And then what I did was I just uh, sat it on and um, tightened it up just a bit so it sat down flush uh, but the gasket maker would squeeze out and it wasn't fully tight yet. Then I just waited an hour and then I talked it up to the torque spec recommended in the service manual. And once that's all done and you're happy with that, I let mine dry for 24 hours. Um, you can probably go for a little less but it's better to do what it says on the gasket maker tube. And then once that was all done, take it for a burn around the block and hope that it doesn't leak. truth open the bonnet and look at that absolutely no leak at all very happy with that so that sums up everything for this video i've got a few more coming out now the few more that are in the making including some rather bad news but uh just stay tuned um 
leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. And we'll see you all in the next video.